Hello, God bless you. Welcome to this July 10th, 2022 message for the house of his glory. Yes, I'm Pastor Deidre Campbell Jones and I am back from vacation. I was actually back early enough, so um, I did get to chat with you all uh, last week uh, during our Independence Day, 4th of July, uh, testimonial praise and prayer service. And I pray that you were blessed for that if you joined us. If not, please listen to the replay, uh, watch uh, on demand, and and really um, participate in the prayers that we prayed, the testimonies I gave uh, regarding our families, our relationships, our communities, and and the power that we have as believers uh, for this nation, um, and the heart that we have as believers, right, for this nation and for others. And so, if you're joining us today at the main um, live uh, website, thehouseofhisglory.com forward slash live. At 10:30 a.m., welcome, welcome. Please uh, say hello to us. Chat with us in the window on this side. But if you are watching on demand from the House of His forward slash messages, me doing this is just weird. <laughs> if you're joining us from the app, which is found at iChurch for Life. Um, that's also weird, but I still want you to engage with us, uh, fellowship with us. Let me know that you are participating, that you're watching. Um, even if you're watching on YouTube, you can email me at contact at the house of his glory dot com. Let me know that you're hanging out with us. Let me know what you think of the messages. And, um, and if it's your first time, uh, we've had a few plan your visits. Um, I noticed we had a, a new one while I was gone. So if indeed you are joining us today for the first time, welcome. Thank you. Uh, please text the word hello to 818-873-3370. Let me know uh, that you were watching and worshiping with us. Um, let me know by what platform uh, you were hanging out with us from. And I will email you uh, a Starbucks gift card. And prayerfully, hopefully, thoughtfully, I remembered to do so for those uh, that visited prior to my vacation. Um, no email spams, just a thank you for hanging out with us and a little information about the ministry. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. If you would like prayer, um, you can also text the word prayer to 818-873-3370. And so, you know what, let's start uh, this service with opening prayer, welcoming our Heavenly Father into the midst of all that we do right after this brief introduction. I'll be right back. You gave a heavenly breath and now it's air in our chest. That's why we're singing it back to you. For every battle you want, for everything that you've done, and everything that you're gonna do. See too much to ever doubt it. Feel so good, I wanna shout it. Yeah, when I really think about it, all I wanna do, all I wanna do is. We That's why we came, that's why we came to lift your name. Come on and sing.
I am back, and as I said, let us welcome Heavenly Father into our service today, into the environments where each of us are worshiping from today so that he can connect us together uh, in the spirit and in fellowship with one another. So Father God, we just thank you so much. We thank you for being a good, good God. We thank you for keeping us in your care and in your protection, even in the midst of all that is going on around us, all that is going on in our governments and with our political leaders, all of the devastations and tragedies of mass shootings, all of the illnesses and sicknesses from uh, loved ones and friends and colleagues who are still falling ill from COVID. Uh, Father, we ask you to continue to put that hedge of protection around us to make our hearts and minds aligned with your truth for us that we are more than overcomers helping our eyes to the works of the enemy all around us whether it's through uh the voting issues uh that come across our uh um our um our tables are placed, whether it's uh, sickness or disease, whether it's financial issues, whether it's relationship issues and strife and struggles, whether it's issues on our jobs, no matter what it is, Father, open our eyes to uh, the truth of what the enemy is doing, uh, whether it's uh, feelings of inadequacy or lack or uh, insufficiency, Father, open our eyes to every trick and every uh, every attack of the enemy and help us to see your word and your truth and exactly what you've put in us, what you've given us through your word so that we can speak over those things, so that we can speak against those things, so that we can know how to pray against those things, so that we can uh, keep our speech rightly aligned with your truth, that we can speak power in our lives and over our lives and over the lives of others uh, that are in our families, uh, that work with us on our jobs, that are our neighbors, Father God, that we would be a beacon of hope, of truth, uh, of understanding, and of your love, Father God, that we would truly lift you up through the example of our lives so that it is through our walk, through our talk, through our prayers and through the favor and blessings of our lives that we draw all men unto you. And so, Father, we just thank you right now uh, for filling this space and time, for giving us an ear to hear what your spirit is saying to us, that we would have a spirit of revelation that would truly make the light bulb of truth go off in our minds and our hearts and our souls that we would absorb this word and make a concentrated focused and committed effort to be changed by this word and to walk in this word and so father i ask you now in the name of jesus christ to touch everyone who uh, comes to this message that they would know that they are, that you are speaking directly to them that they would know that your heart is a heart of a love and success and prosperity and uh, and truth for their lives and that uh, and that if there is anyone who does not know Jesus as their own Lord and Savior, that you would draw them closer uh, to that knowledge, that you would draw them to the truth of your love, that you would let them know and reveal to their hearts that Jesus is alive, but that he died on the cross so that they could be forgiven of all their sins, past, present, and future, and be forgiven and made righteous in you. Draw them to that truth that would cause them to confess out loud, to pour out their hearts to you, and say uh, that they believe that you are God, that they believe that Jesus is Lord, and that they believe that you raised him from the dead so that they could live a new life in you. And so, Father, we thank you right now for this word and for this time together. Help us to lay aside every distraction, every burden, every weight, every issue that would keep us 
separated from you and separated from this word, separated from this truth that you have for us today and allow us uh, to feel that connection, to feel that fellowship, to feel a part of the kingdom of God through this word and through our time together. I thank you for it in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen, and God bless you. <laughs> Let's turn our hearts, continue to turn our hearts towards God. Uh, and keep that spirit of uh, praise and prayer. And uh, turn your hearts with me into uh, towards this praise song. And I'll be right back with the message that God has for us today. Sometimes it's hard to believe That you're working things out for me But I can't see, I can't see I'm walking with blindfolds on But you're more sure than the ground that I stand on and I know that you won't cave, you won't cave in So I trust you Even when I can't see the full plan Everything seems to make no sense I know that you're in control In control I trust you Even when I don't understand My life is in your hands I know that you're in control In control
Welcome back to today's message. Um, let me tell you, there almost wasn't a today's message, um, a fresh new message for you. It has been um, probably about a week, a little more than a week, maybe close to two. Yeah, pretty much close to two where I was thinking there wasn't going to be a message today. Up until maybe just a, a few hours ago, <laughs> maybe 24 hours ago, I don't know, <laughs> is when I was like, okay, I will, I will do this <laughs> for this Sunday. And let me tell you, if it were not for the fact that I am also speaking for um, my favorite local church, New Zion, uh, with Pastor Dennis and Pastor Carol in San Fernando, uh, um, I, I would not have given this message. I would not have prepared this message except that um, uh, every time I tried to think of and, and seek God for what he wanted me to speak to New Zion, um, everything that was coming upon my heart was also for you all as well. And I realized um, God is telling me he wants me to deliver this message. He wants me to continue with the vulnerability um, of which I spoke uh, in testimony from last week um, and, and to uh, and to share this message not only with uh, you but also with New Zion today as well. And so uh, the things that I'm going to say to you all are maybe not the typical things I know, especially as we get towards the end of today's message. They are definitely, absolutely not the typical things that you would uh, hear me uh, speak on ordinarily, but they are still in line with typical me who's going to flip the script. God gives me these different perspectives on his word uh, that uh, really are... Uh, it's the truth of God's word. It's taking the truth that we've always known and, and looking at them through a different lens, uh, a different filter. Uh, and, and it's a filter of truth that is relevant and necessary for today. Amen. And so, you know, uh, when I give these messages, and especially uh, in this month, the series... Uh, topic is truth. The series uh, um, theme is truth, and it's really next level truth. And I have to thank my my bishop, uh, Jason Sample, for for truly opening my eyes to this next level uh, theme that God has given us for this year. This word, um, He's really. Uh, confirming to me that we are still moving to the next level we have been and we still are moving through the next level but uh, you know what the truth of the matter is I haven't been feeling it recently um, and, and my family teases me when I say the truth of the matter throughout a message but that is the title of today's message, the truth of the matter, and the truth of the matter right now is that I'm tired. I'm weary. Uh, I'm 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 tired. And I've mentioned this before, um, but it's kind of piled up on me lately. I'm tired of teaching a truth that I'm not living out either. Uh, I'm tired. I'm weary of praying the same prayers for power and for boldness uh, and for the ability to walk out what I know uh, is true. I know that God has anointed me to teach the truth of his word, to, to rightly divide his truth and to break it down in a way in which you can uh, receive it and understand it. And I'm praying that you are applying it. But the truth of the matter is, how can I be sure that you are applying it when I know that I too am struggling to apply it? And when I look at uh, myself, 
son and uh, my ministry and my relationships and my desires uh, uh, for the future and the prophecies that have been spoken over me and my attempts to uh, fulfill what God has put on my heart. It's been overwhelming. It's been consuming. It doesn't match what I'm praying for. It doesn't match what God has spoken over me. It doesn't match what the word of God says. And I am weary. I am weary. My question to you is, have you ever been wearied by the efforts of your life? The very basic efforts of just living and uh, thriving and surviving and whatever else we do to maintain the everyday basic aspects of our life. Scripture says uh, to not grow weary in well-doing in Galatians 6 and verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Yes, we all get weary. I know we all get weary. And Galatians 6 and 9 is telling us, but if we don't faint, if we don't give up, we're going to reap uh, the rewards in due season. That that season is going to come. Scripture promises that the season of our reward will come if we do not faint, if we do not quit, if we do not give up, if we do not falter. And so uh, let's be clear then. There is a difference between uh, simply being weary and being weary enough to faint, to, uh, to falter, to give up, and to quit. But it's a very fine line, and it is a line that the enemy is working hard at making sure uh, we cross over. He's trying to push us over that line. And, and so I want to talk to you about some things uh, that the, the devil doesn't want you to know. Some things uh, that we think are true, that we're living out as scriptural truth that still hinder us and, and, um, and cause us to stumble and even have us weary in our efforts because our efforts are based upon uh, the, the twisted, slightly off uh, deception of the enemy that we think is true. It's like constantly pushing uh, against an obstacle that we don't necessarily even know is there. It's like walking uphill, but the incline is so very slight that we don't uh, recognize it until our legs are tired and we're weary and we're ready to just quit, turn around and go back downhill. And so uh, the enemy wants us locked into this belief system that will keep us separated from God, separated from true power, separated from an understanding of who we are, and separated from the ability to truly overcome his influence on our everyday lives. That's what that constant battle is. And there is a constant battle between our soul and our spirit. Between uh, uh, the old man and the new man. Uh, between the inner man and the outward man. Uh, but uh, the truth of the matter is um, that old man is dead. He's buried and dead with Jesus Christ. We have been resurrected into the new man, unto new life. Uh, and so uh, that battle then is the enemy lying to us, convincing us that we are still uh, 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 connected to uh, and influenced by that old man. It's the devil lying to us uh, that the outward man, that out 
outward person uh, that is influenced by the world around us is still a person who is in charge, uh, who is uh, influenced by their emotions, influenced more so uh, by what someone else says, um, by the belief systems of the world. He is uh, he is slick. He is an expert in convincing us uh, that 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 battle is still up within us. Uh, that we're we're oblivious to uh, the the truth of this battle. That it's the new man, our uh, reborn spirit, against the lies and the deception of the enemy on a day to day basis we are new inside uh that's uh what i want to read to you um let me see if i'm in the right spot romans chapter 7 22 through 23 for i delight in the law of god after the inward man but i see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. The writer of Romans was trying to describe to us this battle uh, between the inner man, that inner man that is now the new man, that inner man that is uh, comprised of our spirit, that is battling with the soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And it's our mind and our will and our emotions that influence um, what we do and what we say and how we act and what we want and what we think about uh, the world around us, what we think about ourselves, the things that we believe about ourselves, the things that other people have told us about ourselves that we believed, and the things that uh, shape our personality uh, and and our goals and our, uh, our motivations in life. There's a constant battle uh, between uh, this this uh, this outward man of our members this law of sin which is the separation from God and the inner man that has been reborn that has um, that is now alive and quickened by the life of Christ the truth of the matter is this inner man is who we really are. This inner man is who God has created us to be. And so this is the truth of the matter number one. That, that the enemy does not want us to know. Everything that now is uh, uh, are the factors of your personality. When you think about uh, your opinions of what you see on the news. When you think... Uh, when you think about uh, your reactions, your habitual uh, trained reactions to family members, to friends, to co-workers, those triggers, right? Those things that get you depressed, those things that get you sad. When you think about uh, your personality and why you think the way you do, why you act the way you do, why you uh, believe the things that you do, even... Even when you think about how church and pastors and the things that you have learned have influenced that, that is all the outer man. And that is not who you really are. Uh, the reasons why we get hurt, uh, our feelings get hurt. The reasons why we feel inadequate. The reasons why we're striving for this goal or this purpose. The, the Even the reasons why we think we're good at this or not good at this are more often than not comprised of things that are, uh, um, that are spoken to us or taught to us by the world. But there is an inner being, an inner man, an inner woman that God has created who is perfect. It's cre that inner being inside you is created in his image and in his likeness. We are created by 
by him and we are connected to him through his creation. He has poured himself, God Almighty has poured out himself into the creation of each one of us and we are connected to him through a purpose and a design and a power and an ability that he has given to each one one of us and that is who we really are and the truth of the matter is the devil does not want you to ever know that person to ever become that person to ever realize who you really are because Psalm 82 and 6 says that we are like God himself Psalm 82 and 6 I have said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. God is speaking this from the first person, and he is saying, God is saying, God, capital G, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is saying that we are gods, lowercase g, as in the children of the most high God. He created us to be like him in his image and in his likeness. Now, when God created the heavens and the earth, he created uh, the seed after its own kind, the herb bearing seed after its own kind. He created the animals to bear after their own kind. So in other words, a watermelon seed will only produce watermelons. A tomato seed will only produce tomatoes. That that plant, a tomato plant, is only going to create tomatoes. A lion is only going to create lions and humans are only going to give birth to humans and God created little g gods his children that's why scripture says let us make man in our image and in our likeness we are spirit like he is spirit created in human bodies after the similitude and the abilities of our father our creator okay and jesus was sent to earth not just to die for us so that in dying for us we would be reborn that we would be a new creature in him that we would be transformed and conformed into the image of who we are supposed to be in the first place he is our example he is our mold he is our foundation he is uh, the image of who we were always supposed to be always supposed to be. Jesus Christ is the image and the expression of our humanity. Uh, the humanity that we were supposed to have been had Adam and Eve not messed it up in the garden. He is not only the, uh, the example of what we're to be on the outside, but in believing in in him, he brings on the transformation on the inside, the inside that is perfect like God. When we are reborn again, our spirit is reborn perfect and absolute just like God. And so there is no way, no way that Satan wants you to live out your life conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. There is no way that the devil wants you to realize the connection that you have to glory, to power, to the creator. There is no way he wants you to know that you are, uh, that you have the abilities and the likeness and the power and access to Holy Spirit. Spirit to enable you and uh, and help you do all that God says that you can do as his child. And so we are to be in this earth like him. So how come we can't? How come just salvation alone doesn't allow us uh, to be like him when he's made us to be like him? Because the truth of the matter is, 
God has given us every ability we need to overcome whatever the enemy uh, does to us. He has given us from that very same blessing uh, that we would be created in his image and in his likeness. He's given us the ability to subdue the enemy, to put the enemy underfoot, to control what the enemy does in our lives. And so how come we don't? Uh, well, here's the harsh truth of the matter. We are either too complacent, too comfortable in what we know and what we believe, how we're living out our lives. We feel like we're doing it right. We feel like we've gotten it, like we've understood it. And our life is pretty good. It's okay. So we're complacent in what we've accomplished and what we understand. Or we're ignorant of how much it could be better. We're ignorant of how much more we could be doing. We're ignorant of just exactly how limited we are or we are deceived by the doctrine of the devil uh, in thinking that this is the way it is, that this is the truth. Uh, and we're really living out a deception. We're really living out a lie thinking it's true. And so the truth of the matter number two is that you... And me, we don't want to wait until that last day, until we come before the judgment seat of the Most High God to realize, oh my gosh, that's all I needed to do? That's all I needed to say? That's all I needed to believe? That's all I needed to pray? That is my uh, one of my fears, is that as I struggle and I pray for power and I pray for faith and I pray to walk in the truth of God's word, uh, that I don't. And by the end of my life, when I stand before God and the, the throne of God, that I have that instant realization that this is all I needed to do, that this is what I could have accomplished, that this is what could have happened, that this is the power I could have walked in, if only dot, dot, dot. We don't want to wait until it's too late to realize what we could have accomplished if we had just realized the true truth of this life that we've been given. Romans chapter 14, 10 through 12. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you set at not your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. We live out this word as if uh, believing that when we come before God at the end of our lives, when we all stand in that line uh, to, to be presented before uh, God Almighty and the throne of judgment, that when we give an account of ourselves, we're going to have to own up for all the mess that we did. That we, we warn ourselves, uh, uh, you better watch out. You don't want to have to give an account of this, you know, before God. Oh, one day we're going to have to give an account. Like, we're going to have to stand up there before God and go, this is where I messed up. This is where I blew it. This is where I sinned. This is where, you know what? That is not what we're going to do. You know why? Because Jesus has already dealt with our sins. Our sins were annihilated when he went to the cross. Our sins were pinned and nailed to the cross through his hands and through his feet. We are absolved of all guilt of sin. Sin is no longer being imputed to us. It's like our righteousness is a Teflon suit. And every time we sin and mess up, it just slips right off of us. What sticks is when we stay in a sin consciousness, sin mindset, uh, shameful, shuffling along, I'm unworthy, I'm lowly, I I'm just a sinner saved by grace. No, you're acting more like the sinner and not like this. You're saved by grace. That is what hinders our life, not the act of sin. Because God knew. He set it up so that we would 
be forgiven of sin, dead to sin, no longer bound by sin. And so, when it comes to us, you know, why do you hold your sins against your brother? Why do you uh, uh, judge one another on your sins? Here's the deal. When you give an account of yourself, you're going to have to give an account of what did you believe? What did you believe in the word? What did you believe about your savior? What did you believe about God? What did you believe about yourself and the power that he's given you, the purpose that he's given you, the plans that he had for you? When he told you to heal the sick and raise the dead, cast out demons and uh, cleanse the lepers, you're going to have to give an account to did you lay hands on the sick? Did you call for the elders and anoint them with oil? Did you uh, cast out demons? Did you pray against uh, the traditions of man? And did you tra uh, pray against uh, the uh, political leaders? Uh, uh, Herod and uh, what does it say? Beware of the leaven of Herod and the Pharisees. Did you stand up to the religious elite and their lies and their deception? Did you stand up to the political elite and their lies and the deceptions, whether they're Democrats or Republicans? Did you stand up for the truth of God's word? That is what we're going to have to give an account for. And let me tell you, only those things that you did according to the word are going to last. That's going to be it. Everything else is going to burn up through the fire of God's glory and become hay and stubble and rubble and be burnt up and gone. It's going to be meaningless and useless. And only what we do for Christ will remain as stones and precious jewels and gold and silver. That's what you have to give an account for. And that's why I don't want to wait until it's the throne of judgment to walk in the truth of what God says, to believe in the truth of what God says. And so here's why I'm weary. Like I said, I don't want to give an account in that last day as to why I didn't walk in the faith that I have been given. When I taught that we have been given faith, when I taught that walking in faith is what pleases God, when I taught that it's not a matter of having little faith or no faith, but it's only in using little faith or no faith. I don't want to come up short at the end of my days. I want to have everything that God says I can have. I want to do everything that God says I can do. I don't want to be everything God has created me to be. But I also do not want to let my words negate that truth and negate my prayers. 1 John 5 and 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So here's the truth of the matter number three, I believe, is that we have this Christianese understanding that we have to be careful of what we're praying for because we have to pray according to God's will for us, what he wants for us, what he says we can have according to his word and according to his will. But that would be too expansive for us to know, well, gosh, is praying for uh, safety or health or protection or a house or a car or my kids. Is that God's will? Is it God's will for me to live here or to live there? It, it's too detailed for us to truly know what God's will is for us if that what this scripture is saying. It's too expansive. It's too vague. It's too much to know specifically. And so we pray these vague kind of prayers and we hope that they stick. We hope that they land. We hope we've got the right combination of holier than thou words. We hope that we've uh, appealed to the heart of God that maybe he'll hear us. Maybe he'll answer. Maybe he'll bless us. No, the truth of the matter is that the will of God is that we pray. This scripture means that it is according to God's will that we pray, that we pray, that we pray. And if you pray by faith, 
and you know that by faith that God is hearing you, we have the petitions we pray for. So how come then we don't get what we pray for? How come is it because we're praying amiss? I will tell you, it's probably not because we're praying amiss, like we shouldn't be praying for this, we shouldn't be praying for that. Like you know perfectly well when you shouldn't be praying for someone else's husband or you shouldn't be praying for drugs or you shouldn't be praying to, you know, cheat you know, your company out of money or, you know, cheat the government out of taxes. No, no, no. I mean, logically, let's just you know, common sense. Because I hear too many preachers talking about, you know you shouldn't be praying for that. You're praying amiss. You know you shouldn't. And, you, and be careful. You have to pray according to God's will now. You have to pray according to God's will. Okay? So, listen. The truth of the matter is, prayer is more powerful than, uh, than we know, than we act, than we believe. That, uh, that when we pray by faith, Faith says, no, I know God wants this for me. I know that God wants me to have a husband. I know that God will take care of me if I'm single. I know that God wants me to prosper and be in health. I know that God wants my mind to prosper. I know God wants me to not be afraid, to walk in power, to walk in love, and to walk in a peace of mind. I know God wants me to be bold and speak his word. I know God wants me uh, to live in existence a life that is an example of his blessings and his favor. That's when we pray by faith. I know God wants my son to be a man of God and to live in his purpose just as much as he wants you and me to walk in our purposes. I know uh, God wants my husband to succeed and provide for his family and have prosperity so that when he, people look at him and say, hey, Terrence, how did you do that? How did you accomplish that? He can say, it is God and nothing but God. Amen. I know by faith that that's what God wants me to do. And when we pray by faith, that is when we get answers to our prayers. And it's when we don't pray by faith that we're praying amiss. And let me tell you this also, that we don't want to pray and then negate those prayers by what we say. Oh, well, you never know. Oh, well, I'm not sure. Oh, well, I hope that God, yeah, I've been praying for this, but dot, dot, dot. I, I, I'm believing, but dot, dot, dot. We will cancel out our own prayers before we even get up off of our knees sometimes. Let me tell you, you probably need to focus more on what you're saying than on what you're praying. And if you're praying by faith and your words don't negate what you're praying, you will see prayers being answered. And we will be, then be able to pray offensively and not just in reaction to this happened to my life this happened to the world and father fix this change this help this but that we will pray with power so that the gates of hell shall not prevail against us and against our prayers that are knocking down the gates of hell and finally Finally, the truth of the matter is that there are some strongholds that the enemy has been building up in our lives probably since the day we were born and we are not breaking them down the way scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Look, I was talking about this verse, uh, was it last week or uh, the week before last? And we know it. We know it, right? And, and even when I talked about it week before last or whenever it was, I was talking about our weapons not being carnal, right? That if we're uh, fighting with someone, we want to reason with them, and that's carnal. If we have a bill that comes up due, we start thinking, where can I get the money from? That's carnal. And so I was speaking on how our 
our weapons are spiritual. Even though what we're looking at and dealing with is in the world and is in the flesh and, uh, you know, is tangible and according to our five senses, that in order to overcome them, battle them, and win in that warfare, we have to walk in spiritual weapons, our spiritual weapons. But what I did not talk about and what did not even occur to me completely until like the last day of our cruise when yet again my son was just beating me down and being used by the enemy to push my buttons and just uh, demoralize me that I realized there he's pushing the buttons of the strongholds that have been built up in my life probably since kindergarten and and look I know who's watching. Of those of you that I know who's watching, here is the vulnerable truth of this particular matter. Is that probably everybody I know has been handed a brick by Satan to build up that stronghold in my life. And I, yes, have probably, unfortunately, and apologetically right now, I want to say, I've probably been handed some bricks by Satan to, to lay up some strongholds in your lives as well. But I realize there has been this narrative, this narrative, since as far back as I can remember, that the enemy has diligently and persistently and effectively uh, confirmed and reinforced uh, that says, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Yeah, I remember weeks ago when I talked about how I still get uh, men who tell me I, I am out of order because I'm a, a female pastor. I'm not good enough uh, for what God has called me to. Oh, when I, oh, you're a digital pastor? How many members do you have? My membership says I'm not good enough to do what God has called me to do. Uh, when I plan an event and my wonderful, amazing friend Alicia is the only one who shows up, or I've got, you know, six wonderful, loyal people who are always the only ones to show up, it says I'm not good enough. Right? When, when I've got this person saying, well, are you sure you can do that? And maybe you need to take a break. And do you have too much on your plate? And it's the plate that God has given me. It tells me I'm not good enough. Right? When, when I have my, my son questioning even what I cook for dinner. It tells me I'm not good enough. And so that is the narrative of this stronghold that the enemy has been diligently building up brick by brick comment by comment, belief by belief, that now has become a self-fulfilling prophecy. I will hide behind this because I don't want to put my failures out there. I don't want to let the world know that I'm not good enough because it's now what I have come to believe because I've had too much proof from the world and from the people around me to confirm that bosses, teachers, uh, friends, ex-friends, especially some ex-friends, that the reason they're ex is because I realized they, I'm not good, in, they don't think I'm good enough to be their friend, right? That they have discontinued friendships or I had to discontinue that friendship because I wasn't good enough for them. And so that is a stronghold that us, as of last week, I'm like, I need to build uh, tear this down and break down this wall and believe that God says I am good enough and more than good enough I am more than an overcomer that he has created me with power and purpose and abilities and truth and that as long as I am tearing down that wall I can walk in everything, everything that he has for me to walk in and so the truth of the matter is you got to look for your own narrative. You got to break down the walls of your own stronghold. You got to cast down those imaginations, those pictures, those images of yourself, of whatever it is. And you have to do the work, the hard work, and it's not too late. No matter what your truth is, it's not too late to find out what the truth of God is for your life. The truth of the matter is we cannot waste any more time. The truth of the matter is there's too much need. The truth, truth of the matter is there are too many people hurting and God is wanting us to be the answer to their pain but we're too locked up by our own pain. The truth of the matter is there's too many people who need healing but we're too locked up by our own sicknesses and illnesses and diseases.
Jesus. There's too many people who need to know the truth for their lives, but we're too locked up by the deception of our own lives. The truth of the matter is we need to make some changes. The truth of the matter is we've got work to do. The truth of the matter is we need to fall on our knees, open up our hearts and be vulnerable. No matter how young you are, no matter how old you are, do not let the enemy put one more brick in the stronghold of your life. Do not let one more word negate the power of your prayers and do not let one more lie keep you from the truth of who God created you to be and the power that you have in this earth. The truth of the matter is God loves you and he has great and greater things for you. I know the ones that I know and God has more for you and he has more for me and it's only up to you and it's only up to me whether or not we are going to receive what he has for us. Be who he's created us to be and do what he's purposed us to, to do. I, for one, am going to put in the work. I pray you will too. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Join me now for this song of worship. I'll come back with partnership and prayer. Create me to worry. You did not create me to fear, but you created me to worship daily. So I'm gonna leave it all right here. Help me say it. You did not create me to worry.
me to worry You did not create me to fear But you created me to worship daily So I'ma leave it all Keep it simple. God bless you. If you have been touched and moved like I have by this message, um, and you want to be a part of everything God is going to do in this ministry and is striving to do even through me and my limitations, I ask you to join the congregation of the House of His Glory. You can do so by going to the main website, the House of the House of His Glory .com. Click on the contact page and fill in the little form uh, under the link that says join the congregation. That little form is the same one you'll get to if you text the word join to 818-873-3370. I would love to have you grow with us and be a part of what God wants to do in us and through us. If you would like to be a part of this message, like you want to show God, yes, I want you, Father God, to fulfill this message in me. I trust you to do this work in me. He says that when we come to him with our tithe and our offering, he will pour you out a blessing so great it cannot be contained. And it has two meanings. He will pour the blessing of this message out into your life when you bring your tithe and your offering accordingly. But he will also then pour you out a blessing into the lives of others through this message and through the work that he does in your life because of this message. When you bring your tithe and your offering, it's a show of trust. It's a show of faith that you trust him with your finances to do what his word says to pour you out that blessing. And so I invite you to give right now, not to me, not even really to this ministry. Jesus says he receives your tithes and your offering. If you trust him to receive it, he will give it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. You're going to see it's going to come back to your life. Amen. And so however you give, click on the link if you're watching us live above the logo. But there's links on the website and on the app. However you give, thank you for your giving. God wants you to give so that he can bless you. That is his vehicle for blessing your life. And I thank you for however you give. Amen. Let's go into this final closing prayer. Let's just go into it, shall we? Father God, thank you so much for this word. I thank you for how this word is working in my life. I feel it uh, breaking down and tearing down and pulling up some things. I feel it uh, preparing the way for me to build that foundation on this word. And I pray it's doing the same for everyone who is watching and listening and worshiping with us at this time. Father, open our eyes first and foremost to those areas in which we believe the lies of the enemy. Father, open our eyes and open our ears uh, to the things that we say that negate our prayers. Father, uh, 
uh, just give us the revelation of how we've been our own worst enemy, how we've been our own limitations on the great things that you want to do in our lives. Father, reshape our speech. Father, reshape what we believe in our hearts so that out of the abundance of what we store in our hearts, our mouths will begin to speak, that our prayers will be prayed accordingly, that we'll be able to pray over ourselves and over others, Father God, that we will begin to walk in a greater power, a greater boldness, a greater belief in your word and who you are in our lives, that we will begin to live each and every day from the moment we wake up to the time that we go to sleep with a sense of your presence within us, of your power coursing through us, of your spirit enabling us and emboldening us to do the works of Jesus, but to do greater works as well. Father, we ask you now in the name of Jesus to cleanse us of all unrighteousness and all deception and all lies of the enemy that we would slough it off once and for all and that we would truly see ourselves through your eyes. That we would see the lost and the hurting through your eyes. That we would see through the deception of our leaders and our governments and that we would pray for the heart and soul of your people. That righteous decisions would be made on our behalf. That uh, that Christians and believers would come to the truth. That they would humble themselves and be convicted of the errors of their ways. That pastors and preachers uh, would uh, have their mouths shut up if they were teaching anything that is against your truth and your word and your will for your church. Father God, we thank you for being a good, good God and giving us a way out of no way. For making us uh, 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 your children and for conforming us into the image of your son Jesus Christ we thank you for your grace we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your love we thank you for your power your purpose and your will for our lives and most of all we thank you for uh, cleansing us for the blood of Jesus Christ and for your love we pray this prayer in the mighty matchless glorious and perfect name of your son Jesus Christ amen amen and God bless you I will see you next week. I don't know if it's going to be a replay repeat or if God's going to give me another uh, message for you. Um, playing it by ear, week by week, by the Spirit of God. And I pray you will be here for it. Until then, oh gosh, walk in His glory. Uh, walk in His power and, and receive everything, all the blessings that God has just for you. I love you. Bye-bye.